So hello everyone, welcome to the Gonzales Marketing Video. Today, hindi tayo nag house tour. I'm going to be doing an interview with the one and only architect John. Okay, before I introduce who he is, um, the reason why I'm doing this interview is, ang dami nyo kasi tinatanong about, ang dami nyo tinatanong about houses, house construction. Sa totoo lang, I can't answer them in detail kasi hindi yun yung expertise ko. So, what I decided to do was bring experts who actually know their fields. No. I decided to bring in people who are experts in what they do para sila na magsasagawa. Sila na magsasagot ng mga tanong ninyo. And right now, I have Architect John. He is a freelance architect and he has a YouTube channel where he educates people on architecture, construction, and many other things. If you, I suggest, highly, I highly suggest, guys, after you watch this video, you, you go to his channel. Mat, marami kayong matututunan. Architect John knows what he's talking about. So, welcome, Architect. Yes, uh, good evening, uh, Joby, and good evening to your viewers. Okay. So, before we start, Architect, uh, I just want to know, what what made you want to be an architect? Uh, actually, it was by accident. Uh, because um, I actually want to become a painter before. And, uh, yeah. And my father told me, I have a lot of painting. If you're not that famous, no one will buy your painting. <laughs> so I ended up taking architecture. <laughs> so kasi I was thinking all along na architecture is purely visual uh, arts, just like painting. Mm. So yun yung, that was at the back of my mind, uh, to find out na uh, magkaiba pala talaga. <laughs> sobrang nga, sobrang iba eh. Pero, uh, you need to be good at drawing to be a good architect. It helps that uh, you're good in drawings because uh, most of the time you'll be able to express uh, your ideas through drawings. Unlike ngayon, uh, uh, we have uh, digital tools already. Uh, before, kasi, uh, pag nag express ka kung anong ideas mo, you have to do it in uh, sketch or manual drawings. So, even now, naman, pa rin naman, I still uh, utilize uh, drawings. Kasi, like for example, you're in, in a uh, construction site and then you want to ex uh, explain something to uh, the people uh, about your idea and then you have to sketch. Okay. Kasi hindi talaga ako magaling mag-drawing pero sobrang interested ako sa mag ginagawa niyo yung pag-build ng building. Architect, so let's head on to the first question. Ang daming okay. tao nagtatanong na ito. Eh. Alam ko dito direct, hindi mo masasagot na direct sim sa maraming factors. Eh. But ano ang mas mura o mas practical? Magpagawa ng bahay or to buy one that's already built? Yun nga, uh, kagaya na sabi mo, uh, it's actually hard to... Uh, answer that question because it depends on the preference of uh, the person or the uh, client. Okay. Uh, on the first uh, onset, mas mahal yung ano, magpagawa ka ng bahay kasi it's customized eh, di ba? Uh, uh, most of the time, uh, kung ano yung mga nasa wish list mo, yun yung ilalagay mo, di ba? So, uh, sa unang arangkada, kumbaga, sabi pa nga, uh, uh, you'll find out na you'll be spending more. Uh, ang ano naman doon sa ready-made na baha is that uh, sometimes uh, nag-double yung gastos mo kasi, uh, for example, if you are uh, someone na uh, gusto mong baguhin yung layout ng isang bahay, uh, hindi siya fit or custom, custom, customized doon sa needs mo. Sometimes you have to renovate it, di ba? So, uh, mapapagastos ka rin. So, bali, doble gastos ka. Mm. Ang narinig ko kasi architect sa mga ibang contractor, when I asked them, they sabi nila, Joby, um, essentially, mas mura raw magpatayo ng bahay kasi calculated mo yung expenses mo, ganyan. Hindi, ganito. Mas mura magpatayo ng bahay kasi when you go to a already built home, you're not just paying for the home, eh. 
you're also paying for the labor, you're also paying for the expertise of the engineers, ganyan. And di ba, di ba, you have experience building homes. Hasil talaga mag, maraming problema. Maraming problema sa pagpagawa ng bahay. Maraming mga ano. And when you buy a ready-built home, wala ka ng problema. Nandun na. Kaya mas mahal daw bumili ng ready-made home. As compared to sa magpapagawa ka mismo, makakamura ka, pero kayo dadaan ng problema. You're gonna have to deal with it yourself. So, what do you have to say about it? Totoo naman. Uh, partly true naman. Pero yun nga, sabi ko, depende sa ano eh. Uh, eh hindi mo kasi siya may compare na parang like apples to apples na pagkukumparahan mo. So, may, may advantage, may disadvantage. Uh, kaya yun, na uh, pwede na makamura ka sa ano, pagpagawa kaysa sa uh, bibili ka ng ready-made. So, based on what your answer is, it's the wrong question eh. Kasi it Correct. Diba? So instead of asking that question, what what should like my audience or what should people ask? Uh, yung ano doon is, ano ba yung preference nila? Uh, kasi there are pros and cons both of building your own house and buying a house. Diba? A ready-made house. Yun. Tapos from there, magkikita mo kung doon ka magdi-decide kung uh, yung uh, cost ba nito uh, commensurate siya doon sa pros and cons, doon sa napili mong preference. Mm. So basically, first of all, to be able to answer that question properly, kailangan alam mo yung gusto mo. Yes, correct. Hindi lang yung patanong-tanong ka na, oh, mas mahal ba yan? Eh, ang daming ibang factors. Eh. So it's the wrong question. Uh, It really depends on kung anong gusto mo. Eh. Kasi kung gusto mo, simple lang, at nakahanap ka ng building, uh, built house na lahat ng preferences mo nandun, eh, eh, parang mas makakamura ka. Okay. Diba? Exactly. Uh... Okay. So, follow-up question to that. Sa mga taong gustong magpagawa ng bahay, kasi some of them think, ah, mas makakamura ako kapag ako na lang magpagawa mismo. Anong mga warning mo? Oo, oh, na-mention ko yan dun sa isa sa mga vlog ko. Yung, isa sa mga disadvantage nung kukuha ka ng mga tao is lahat ng stress Andun sa'yo, uh, like purchasing, management of people, lahat. So, yun yung binabayaran mo sa contractor actually. Na if you're going to get a contractor uh, to build for you, against dun sa ikukuha ka lang ng tao, uh, yung stress level. <laughs> na Yung mga maraming factor dyan. Kasi hindi, hindi madali mag-manage ng tao, hindi madaling mag-purchase ng materials, uh, maghanap ng supplies ng mga gamit. Tsaka, especially if you're not uh, someone na technical, tapos magpapagawa ka ng bahay and uh, you have no idea about technical things, uh, chances are, magre-rely ka lang din sa mga tao mo kung ano yung hihitid sa'yo. Kaya minsan talaga, um, ma- mapapagastos ka kasi di mo alam eh. Pero kung gusto mo nang medyo mas safe ka sa safe side, I always recommend get a contractor, a uh, legit contractor, okay? Kasi may habol ka, tsaka may warranty. Basically, sa surface level, oo, mas makakamura ka kasi walang contractor fee or whatever. Pero, mm-hmm. yung lokohin eh, kasi kung, lalo na kung wala kang alam, lulokohin ka ng materialis, ano, tas oo lang ng oo, tas wala. Okay, so yung mga first-timer guys, you heard it right there, okay? So, when you're building a house, it's not just A to Z, na ano, sobrang daming mga mangyayari, marami rin kalokohan minsan, di ba? Now, di ba, uh, someone asked here, is PCAB required when getting a contractor? What's PCAB? Uh, it's Philippine Contractors Accreditation Board. Parang ma-regulate lang yung mga contractors. Yun nga, maiwasan yung mga fly-by-night na contractors na tinatawag kasi marami talaga nag-offer ng service na contractor pero hindi sila legitimate kasi sa panahon ngayon yung iba they can just post in the internet yung mga kruare ginawa nila kasi pwede silang kumuha lang yung mandaya sila na sinasabi nila ito yung experience namin ito tos. kaya pag hindi na regulate pag wala silang license mahirap mong habulin ang ano lang naman doon is mahabol mo mayroon kang ano may pag uh, ahawakan ka based on your kwentos ang dami palang mga Parang dirty side sa construction industry. Yes, it's because of uh, the, there are money involved in construction. Sa totoo lang, uh, kaya marami yung mga tumapasok sa kanyang field. It's because there's money in construction kasi sa sobrang lawak ng scope niya, uh, pwede kasing 
uh, tawag to manip- manipulate nung mga tao na take advantage. Kaya mar- kaya wag ka na magtaka na may mga nangyayari yan. So, ito, another question. How do I know if my contractor's price is too high or too low? Lalo na pag hindi mo, like it's your first time building a home. Okay, uh, uh, the right process kasi is that uh, you have to get the plan from an architect. I'm not saying this just because I'm an architect. The architect uh, is the uh, agent of the client. Alimawa, meron siyang plano. Uh, may ginawa si architect na plano, gagawa siya ng estimates kasama sa scope niya yung estimates, hindi lang siya plano. And from there, pag magpa-code sila, may si client, meron siya pang counter-check. Mahirap kasi mag-estimate uh, na walang details. So the details must come from the architect. Uh, kaya, kaya minsan dun sa mga blogs ko, ang daming nagtatanong ng, architect, pag magpagawa ba ako ng ganito klaseng bahay, magkano? Na, kaya sinasabi ko, it's not as easy as that, uh, as simple as that na, ah, ganun yan, ganun yan. Kasi it depends on uh, the plan, the area, the specifications, uh, kung ano yung mga materials na gagamitin. So, maraming ano, yung ginagawa natin na per square method, ayun uh, lang yung mga quick reference lang yun. Di ba, may ang tayong per square method na para more or less may idea tayo like, for example, ah, uh, pinipeg ito sa current parameters sa 25,000 per square meter. So more or less, meron ka, ano, meron ka ng benchmark, but not necessarily accurate yan. So it depends pa rin talaga sa magiging details ng plano at saka specifications. Architect, so for example, I, I hired you, tapos binigyan mo ako ng plano. I go to the contractor, then he gives me a price. Pwede ba kitang balikan and say, Architect, ito yung binigay na price sa akin, sa tingin mo tama. Pwede ba? Yes, that's correct. Uh, p- pwede kasi, not necessarily naman na pareho-pareho. Ha? Kasi yung estimate talaga, ano yan eh, uh, medyo tricky yan na ano eh. But more or less, as long as mag-approximate, tapos uh, hindi ganun kalayo yung ano, may mga factors na lang na kinoconsider, malalaman natin na hindi siya overpriced or tama naman yung estimate niya. So, oh, ito, this one. This one's, this one's a bit different eh. Anong pwedeng gawin? Like, let's say I'm building a home, right? What can I do to to minimize yung heat retention ng home? Para, kasi mainit dito, di ba? What can I do to make the home as cool as possible? Without aircon, uh, marami na tayong, uh, because of uh, technology na rin, marami tayong building materials na nag-offset dun sa mga init, something like that. But, yung pinaka-basic talaga, yung tinatawag na, ano, uh, cross ventilation uh, orientation north south orientation yung mga prevailing winds yun yung mga kino-consider kasi sustainable design tinatawag okay so what's that north south ano orientation bakit bakit north south it depends on sa lote mo kasi di ba may time talaga na fix na yung lote mo so you can't do anything about it pero uh, granting na wala kang isipin like malaki talaga yung lote mo Uh, you have the luxury of space. Uh, yung tinatawag na uh, north-south orientation, yung placement of openings mo, windows, uh, doon mo siya ilalagay sa mga prevailing winds. Mm. Kasi, di ba yung prevailing winds natin, yung tinatawag na uh, amihan, tsaka kabagat. Pero kagaya na sabi ko, mahirap din. Kasi halimbawa ngayon na dikit-dikit na yung bahay and then oh. you, you have a lot na fixed na doon, minimal na lang yung kaya mong mag- madiscarte doon. So, Magagawa pa rin naman paraan, pero not as much na talaga. Yun na nga eh, kasi pag dikit-dikit yung bahay, parang naharangan din yung hangin. So, uh, so may factor din. So, okay. Kasi so, mas... let's say ganong sub, let's say ganong subdivision, di ba? Dikit-dikit yung bahay. North, facing north, facing south, facing east, facing west. What is the coolest, you know, yung pinaka malamig na orin? Uh, usually, mas maganda doon na facing east. Uh, by by common knowledge, it's, it's good na facing east. Kasi, like for example, uh, yung bedroom mo nakatapat sa west, uh, it will give you a, a lot of discomfort. Kasi pag facing west siya, pagdating sa gabi, yung heat niya hindi pa makakalabas sa room mo. So that's why sinasabi nila na usually yung mga bedrooms natin do natin nilalagay sa east. Okay, kasi para pagdating sa gabi at least cool na siya. Kaya lang yun nga, uh, depende na talaga sa lote ngayon. 
<laughs> if if you don't have the luxury of uh, space na talaga sa lap mo, minsan mahirap na rin ang diskarte. <laughs> so, sabi mo, konti na lang yung diskarte kasi dikit-dikit na yung bahay. So, ano yung mga remaining na diskarte? Pwede tayong gumawa nga ng ano, yung mga cross ventilation na tinatawag. Yeah, what's that? High ceiling. Oh, cross cross ventilation. ventilation is that, uh, for example, in a room, uh, meron kang uh, large uh, window dun sa... For example, uh, north-south orientation yung, yung prevailing winds, di ba? So, ang mo, may, may window ka sa north, uh, north, ano, north portion ng bahay mo. Uh, Doon sa kabila naman niya, yung sa south side mo, maglagay ka ng bintana rin na usually mataas. Kasi uh, yung heat, heat daw goes up, di ba? So, pagpasok ng hangin dun sa window mo, iinit siya sa loob ng room mo, aakit siya kasi yung heat uh, umaangat eh. So, pag angat niya doon sa taas, sa so doon lalabas yung heat. So, yun yung mga tinatawag na cross ventilation. Tsaka marami pa, actually, like uh, high ceiling kasi uh, we are uh, no, uh, tropical country tayo. Hindi sa atin uubra yung mabababa yung mga ceiling, low ceilings kasi uh, parang nga magkaroon ng better circulation. Mas maganda, mas uh, makakapag-lessen ng heat. So, guys, ano ha? I, I'm, I'm, I'm so blessed, I'm so educated and, ah, no, I'm so educated. I'm so blessed by this kasi this is not, you can't find, you can't find this just from anyone eh. So, so this is one reason why you should get an architect kasi, you know, all these, all these things, this is what architects do. This is what they know. So, yeah. Next question. Um, so, may nagtanong eh, how much magpagawa ng pool? And do you know how much yung maintenance? Swimming pa, pool or not, not just swimming pool, mga pool for that matter are ano, specialty construction. Uh, from base lang sa pagkakalam ko, nag-average siya ng uh, mga around 18,000 per square meter. Uh, rough estimate. Pagdating naman sa maintenance, hindi na ganun ka hindi naman ganun ka gastos na. Kasi although from time to time mag, uh, magpano ka ng tubig, di ba, yung mga maintenance operation, it's not as uh, expensive compared talaga dun sa initial mo na magpagawa. Kasi marami kang uh, ikaw consider dun eh. So guys, alright? 18, more or less 18,000. But then, kung, feel ko kung gusto nyo pa ng mga extra water features, dadagdag pa yun eh. Yeah. Yung fountain, fountain again. Like the... Mm-hmm. Uh, so, it all depends on the details. So, it's, sabi ko nga, it's a specialty construction. I suggest talaga na uh, yung kukunin nyo rin, yung mga nag specialized na mga pools. Uh, hindi pwede yung mga... Pwede na. Ako kami marulungan eh. Marami na, marami atang nadadali sa mga ganun tao eh. Yung mga pwede na. Uh, well, because it's a job, you know. Uh, trabaho yan eh. Pero yan eh. Uh, seldom sila sabihin, ay, sorry, di ko alam yun eh. Kasi, pag nakita nila na may, kahit may konti lang silang idea na, they will say, yes, kaya namin yan. <laughs> so, yun yung ano naman. So, so, you better ask for the profiles, sample projects, mga ganyan. So, para malaman mo na talaga experience ka sa ganun uh, trabaho. Oh, guys, ah, or, so remember what architects said, hindi lahat ng mga tao na, oh, we can do this, we can do that. You, you don't believe them agad. Kasi, as he said, pag alam nilang pagkikitaan nila yun, most likely, oh, oh yan, di ba? Para, para makakuha. Oh, para. Diba? Uh, Ito, architect, I heard this from a contractor friend of mine. Ito sabi niya, Joby, kipag, when you're doing construction, dapat lahat recorded. When you have a phone call, dapat nakasulat yan. Kasi daw, sa construction industry, lokohan, ay, ay turuan. Pag, pag hindi mo nasulat, pag hindi mo na-confirm, parang, wawa ka. That's true. Kasi kahit yung mga, hindi naman sa sina, kahit sabihin natin, kakilala mo or kaibigan mo, hindi naman sinasabi na we don't trust them, okay? But it's a good practice talaga to document everything. Like for example, yung mga, yung mga bikla ang usapan na, ay pwede bang magdagdag tayo ng ganito? Tapos, oh, sige, sige, okay lang yan. Yung mga tipong ganun, kasi mahilig tayo sa ganun. As Filipinos, mahilig tayo sa ganun eh. Di ba? Yung parang, we just, uh, pwede na. Pwede na. Oh, 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 that's a, walang problema, ganyan. And then at the end of the day, doon natin magkikita na may problema pala kasi magkukwentahan na. Diba? Because there's money involved, kahit pa magkakaibigan kayo. Kasi totoo nga naman, nakakaalangan, diba? Kasi may tinatawag na lang, na baka magkaroon ng trust issue. No? Bakit? Wala ka bang tiwala sa akin? Diba? Kaya yun eh. It's good na talaga mag-explain lang na, okay pre, uh, kahit magkakilala tayo, uh, let's just document everything na pinag-uusapan natin. Uh, para walang ano, walang, <laughs> walang masirang pagkakaibigan. 
So guys, uh, if any of you plan to build homes or you're hiring a contractor, document everything, write everything, emails, voice, dapat nakasulat. So, next question. Pick season to build a house in the Philippines based on your experience. Uh, common knowledge naman na uh, yung perfect season na uh, to build the house is mga summertime kasi alam mo naman sa sa ano natin na karamihan sa mga uh, methods natin is talaga ano pa more on traditional at uh, nakasalalay talaga na mas mas effective yung mga tao natin magtrabaho using traditional methods kung hindi tagulan pero tiba kasi sometimes certain materials are cheaper in certain months like maybe cement is more expensive than this and yes uh, during rainy season kasi kaya nga mas cheaper siya kasi uh, yung iba nga uh, they will ano uh, forgo yung uh, construction like for example mag- malapit na mag December di ba yung iba ayo ayo gumastos din eh kasi mag December eh may gastos season yan eh yung iba uh, they would rather uh, do it on the following year, kung alanganin ka na sa taon, uh, mamura yung materiales. But, uh, depende rin sa materiales kasi ngayon, uh, unpredictable tayo talaga eh, dito sa Pilipinas. Uh, depende na rin sa materials. So, hindi hindi talaga lahat ng materials mura pag ganitong season. Let's say, for example, me, I'm looking, I'm, I'm in the market for a new home. Ganyan. Gusto ko kasi na the home I buy, hindi siya overpriced. The money I pay for it, yung value is the value of the home is worth the money I pay for it. Kasi di ba may mga ibang houses na overpriced. So how do what things in the home I can look at to identify na ah overpriced yung bahay na to? First sa material pa rin. Uh, material, uh, malalaman mo naman yung klase ng material na ginagamit eh. Yung mga high-end talaga at saka yung mga yung mga tamang ano lang tamang presyo lang. Pero isa din sa mga consideration when uh, buying a house na that adds value nga dun sa bahay, ulang-ula, location, yung view. Oh. Uh, Di ba? Yun, 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 yun yung mga, ano, eh, yung mga consideration din na nag add ng value nung ano. I saw one of your videos. Sabi mo parang, what's the benefit of having a courtyard sa home? Does that add value to the home, yung mga courtyard na ganyan? Uh, definitely. Kasi... Ano eh, uh, for example, uh, yung, lalo na pag yung courtyard mo, you have a pool or indoor garden. Iba yung ano eh, uh, not only that uh, it benefits dun sa user or yung titira, it, ano din, may value siya dun sa structure mismo, di ba? Kasi dagdag feature yan eh, additional feature yan eh. So besides a courtyard, ano pa yung mga interest, like, based on your experience, what are some certain parts of a home na unique and would really add value to to it? Hindi naman lahat ng bahay may courtyard. Uh, when it is uh, designed, uh, properly designed, uh, tapos may, may kwento yung bahay niya, talagang well thought, uh, well planned. Interesting yun. May mga ganung house yung may kwento? Uh, in our lingo, uh, in our language, uh, may kwento yun. Kasi architecture is not a, a random placement of spaces. It's always uh, customized dun sa user. So guys, that's another reason why you should hire an architect. Yeah, that's basically um, all of the questions, actually. Um, okay. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, I, so, I don't know how to end so, this interview kasi it is the first time. Eh. So last question, architect. To in, okay. if someone here is watching, you're in uh, maybe in yung course mo, Arky. Tapos nahihirapan ka, ganyan. So, architect, what what can you say to those people na nahihirapan ngayon? In every endeavor naman, lahat naman, ano eh, uh, mahirap eh. Uh, there are no shortcuts, okay? Walang madali. Uh, but it's about what we are going to do with the given situation. So, kung nahihirapan tayo, isipin mo lang na hindi naman ikaw lang nahihirapan at hindi lang sa field natin tayo nahihirapan. Maraming nahihirapan, ano, kahit sa, kahit sa, ano, kahit sa endeavor. So, ano lang, ha? Uh, just pursue, okay? Just uh, laban lang. So guys, basically, pag kayo nahihirapan sa college, hindi lang kayo nahihirapan, lahat kami nahihirapan. So just keep going. <laughs> basically, that's what Architect said, okay? Huwag na kayong magreklamo dyan. Lahat tayo nahihirapan. Anyways, Architect, thank you so much for your time. Uh, okay. Thank you. Thank you for this. Uh, everyone, I hope you enjoyed uh, the knowledge, the education. Comment in the comment section down below kung yung mga tanong ninyo para I know who to invite next. Okay, and architect, would you be willing ba if ever 
I'm gonna learn yung live stream. Eh. Gusto ko matuto yung live stream. If ever na may live stream, would you be willing oh, to yeah. <laughs> And hopefully, uh, next time we could uh, we could meet or discuss in, in in person if things get better na. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Grabe. Kasi, yeah, I, I'd love that. I'd love that so much. My, my audience would learn a lot from you. Okay, guys. So, don't forget, subscribe to Architect Jan. Guys, just watch his videos. Ang dami niyo matatutunan. Okay, about homes, about ganyan. And, yeah. So, thank you. Uh, I don't know how to end this interview. Eh. First time ko. So, yeah. thank you. God bless. Uh, enjoy. Yun na lang. Alright, see you. Thank you din, Joby. God bless you also. God bless, Architect. Sige, see you in the next one. Okay.